Ready, Martin? All right. <laughs> Welcome to our Wednesday evening uh, prayer service. Uh, so good to see you here with us. Um, we are trying something new, so if you are at home watching, um, let us know how you are viewing experiences on YouTube and Facebook, and uh, we're hoping it's going to be, uh, everything's going to run smoothly for us tonight. Uh, a couple of things. Uh, first of all, just to um, announce, uh, remind everyone that this coming Sunday night, uh, we're going to have a special ice cream fellowship and uh, movie over at the Family Life Center. Uh, um, so. We are trying something new, so if that's what you get for trying something new, right? All right. <laughs> You want to hear me preach this twice tonight? Um, so, 6.30, homemade ice cream, and uh, we're watching a missions video on North Africa. Uh, North Africa has a long history throughout the church. Um, some of the greatest theologians of the early church were in North Africa. And uh, it's still, the gospel is still there today, even though there's heavy, heavy, uh, persecution um, so we're going to have the opportunity to learn about that and enjoy some ice cream and fellowship uh, Sunday night uh, we're going to look tonight at Philippians chapter 4 verse 7 if you want to go ahead and open up to that verse because our treasure verse if you remember is verse 6 so when you find Philippians 4 7 we'll say our treasure verse verse 6 together <clears throat> So let's say that, Philippians 4, 6, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God, Philippians 4, 6. And we're going to even, un even unpack that a little more as we as we look at verse 7 tonight <clears throat> for our study. Does anyone have any prayer requests or praise reports that you would like to mention? I don't have anything new as far as I know. There's uh, nothing new has developed with uh, any of our members uh, for prayer requests. So does anyone have uh, something or someone they'd like to mention tonight? We know we need to pray for our nation, uh, the continual unrest and uh, through this uh, coronavirus and uh, those issues and our political leaders and those on the front lines and those kinds of things. Um, Susie? others all right we're going to sing uh tonight um it's hymn number 182 it's what a friend we have in jesus and the reason why i chose for us to sing uh, this particular hymn tonight is because of the connection that it has with our treasure verse verse six and the verse that we're studying tonight in verse seven and uh, just listen to these words as as we uh Prepare to sing, what a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear, what a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. That's verse 6, isn't it? Verse 7, oh, what peace we often forfeit, oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. 
is a great encouragement, a great reminder, and a great introduction to our verse tonight. So if you would stand, and uh, let's really sing it out. You got, you, we're all spread out, and so we got to sing it out so we can hear it. If you don't hear somebody else singing, you don't want to sing, do you? So you got to sing loud enough for your neighbor to hear. Miss Elsie, that means you got to really sing. So we got to we got to hear each other sing tonight. All right, let's go. Philippians 4, 7, and as I was studying this verse uh, for tonight, I was, I began to get a little excited about it because, <laughs> we're going to do repeat tonight all night, Pete and repeat, will and re-will, pat and repat. <laughs> I begin to get excited about this verse because uh, we know the, the verse itself. We're pretty familiar with this verse of Scripture. But I've, I've often just thought about the verse by itself, just alone, standing alone. And uh, what was kind of very, what was very encouraging to me uh, is to begin to see the connection with this verse and the preceding verses that we've that we've just that we've already studied together. So verse 7 says, and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So I want to make three notes uh, about this verse for us tonight. Number 1, there's a promise here, isn't there? And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. That's a promise. But that promise, if you notice, 
is resting on three preconditions. Three things that should already be occurring. And those three things are what we've studied in verse 4, verse 5, and verse 6. So notice then how verse 7 is connected to verses 4, 5, and 6 by that conjunction, and, and. So there's three commands. There's a command in verse 4, a command in verse 5, a command in verse 6. These things we should be doing, and... Those commands then are directly tied to the promise of verse 7. In other words, when verses 4 through 6 are happening, then verse 7 will be realized. And the peace of God will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Rejoice in the Lord always. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone do not be anxious about anything but in everything by prayer. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Now notice how these three commands of verses 4 through 6 cover every aspect of our emotional, spiritual lives. Rejoice in the Lord always. That's a matter of joy being in our hearts. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. That's a matter of having a gentle spirit or demeanor. Do not be anxious about anything. That's a matter of our thought life, our minds. Those are the realms in our lives where we need peace. So we don't need peace in our, in, 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 I don't need peace in my arm. You know, my arm is very unpeaceful. I need peace in my arm or my foot. We don't need peace in our physical being, but in our spiritual lives, in our emotional lives, that's where we need peace. And as we are pursuing, when we see these Three commands as we are pursuing joy in our hearts and gentleness in our spirits and faith in our minds, the peace of God begins to settle in us in every, every fabric of our spiritual lives, our hearts, our spirit, our soul, and our minds. So there's a connection here that, that we need to see, first of all. Second of all, to see that, again, this peace is unlike any other peace, isn't it? First of all, we know immediately that this is an otherworldly peace or a peace outside of the realm of, of um, our capacity when it says, and the peace of God. Peace of God. So this is a peace that is not derived from us that we cannot manufacture or that we cannot accomplish. That, that doesn't come from someone else. We can't get this peace from someone else or someone else can't make this peace happen for us. We can't get this from the world. The world is not going to deliver this kind of peace. Our governments are not going to deliver this kind of peace. Our, our circumstances... Sometimes we um, define our peace relative to what our circumstances are. But our circumstances, even if we have an, an easygoing day, a fun-filled day, a trouble-free day, our circumstances are not able to deliver this kind of peace. Because this is a peace of God, not of circumstance. This is a peace that we can't experience from our bank account if the bank account's full we have peace if it's running low well, not so much peace this is not that kind of peace it's not from a, our level of comfort or security or safety 
It's not a peace that is defined in terms of the absence of conflict. That's what we often think about peace. Well, it was a, it was a peaceful day because I didn't have any trouble. I have, a, I have a peaceful relationship with this person because we're not in any kind of confrontation. But this is not that kind of peace, is it? This is not speaking about the absence of turmoil or strife or hardship and therefore there's peace. This is a peace from God, of God. It's a divine peace, meaning it is a grace. It is something that is God-given. God bestows upon his people, something that comes from God that settles upon the lives of the children of God. So it cannot be found in any other source. And that's why, that's why it surpasses all understanding. Because it's beyond us. It's beyond how we usually define or think of peace. So, and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. All other types of peace, we can reason out all other types of peace. All those examples I've just given are easy to think of because they're, they're easy to reason out. They're easy in our experience. But even on larger scales, such as national peace, that's something we're thinking of in, right here in our day, or social peace we're thinking of, or even nations at war with each other, or, or even um, relational peace, conflict between family members or or co-workers, or, or those kinds of things, confrontations. We, all of those kinds of elements of conflict or turmoil, they all result, they, the, the peace, if, you, if you're going to have peace in those re- relationships or circumstances, it's all a result of, of some kind of resolve or some kind of reconciliation. But this peace... This peace doesn't come from the resolve or the reconciliation of man to man or country to country or group to group or person to person. This comes from the resolve of God and the reconciliation of man to God by God. This is a divine peace. And that's why it surpasses all understanding because this peace you can experience, you can have as a child of God no matter what upheaval or turmoil or strife that you might find yourself in the middle of. And that's the difference, isn't it? If we are in the middle of some kind of conflict or confrontation or trouble or trial and we're thinking of peace in terms of the way humans perceive a a human perspective of peace we would say well there's no peace but but this is why this verse is here because this peace from God can settle on our lives in spite of what's happening around us in spite of what's happening to us and that's why it surpasses all understanding you should not be at peace in this circumstance but you are a child of God and the peace that you have is from him That's why it surpasses. We, we often think about this verse in times of grief, don't we? There's a peace that we have as, as children of God when we know that a beloved brother or sister in Christ who has passed away is with the Father. There, there's a certain peace that we have that those who are apart from Christ do not understand. It surpasses their understanding that while we're grieving, we can be at peace. But nothing else that we experience is like this peace. This peace can still the heart, the soul, and the mind, even in circumstances that are not peaceful. That are not peaceful. So, first couple of things, then this 
this promise of peace is attached to these three preconditions, these three commands. This is a peace like no other peace. And then finally, the promise, this promise of peace fulfills the three preconditions, the three commands. Notice that this promise is not so much about the presence of the peace. Notice, notice where the promise lies in this verse. It's not so much that, that if you are a child of God, you are the, the promise is that this peace will be present. That's something of a given, actually. The promise is not that this peace will come. That's not what the verse says, does it? It says, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will come to you. No, the, the scripture is assuming that the peace of God is already present. The promise is what this peace is going to accomplish in you. And the promise is this, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Now this is very encouraging. Because that's exactly where. Verses 4 through 6 have been dealing isn't it? In the heart. In the mind. In the spiritual realm. So this peace is going to guard our hearts and minds. What is it guarding our hearts and minds from? What's, what's the 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 peace guarding our hearts and minds from. And I think if we go back to, if we see that conjunction and, we, it takes us back to verses 4, 5, and 6, doesn't it? We go back there for the answer. Well, it's, it's guarding our hearts from the loss of joy by the presence of self-focused discouragement, grumbling, complaining. It's guarding our hearts from that from the loss of joy by the presence of these things. It's guarding our spirits from becoming harsh, insensitive, selfish, by, by keeping us reasonable to everyone, gentle to everyone. It guards our minds from fear and worry by keeping us in a, in a state of faith and, and trust in the Lord. In other words, the commands of verses 4 through 6 are connected to the promise of verse 7 in both directions. They work, it's working both ways at the same time. Here's what I mean by that. As we are pursuing verses 4, 5, and 6, we are realizing verse 7, the promise of verse 7. But it's actually also the promise of verse 7 that is enabling us to pursue and realize verses 4, 5, and 6. The peace of God is guarding our hearts and minds. Therefore, we can rejoice in the Lord. We can be reasonable. We can not be anxious. And as we are rejoicing in the Lord, being reasonable, not being anxious, then we are experiencing having the peace of the Lord. Now, this principle of how this is act, it actually works both ways, the command and the promise, is all over Scripture. It's all over Scripture. God is at work in our working as we are striving to rejoice in the Lord always God is enabling us to rejoice in the Lord always that's how it's working that's why the promise comes in in other words God just doesn't give us a flurry of commands and say now do your best but then he enables us to accomplish what he commands in fact, this principle is stated in this very book in a very familiar way. Philippians chapter 2, verses 12 and 13. Work out your salvation 
That's you. That's me. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. That's a command. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Now look at verse 13. And here's the promise. For it is God who works in you. See that? Both to will and to work for his good pleasure. The promises of God are enabling and strengthening us to pursue the commands of God. And as we are pursuing his commands, his will for our lives, we are experiencing the fullness of that promise. Lastly, quickly, how does this peace guard our hearts and our minds? And that, that's, the, that's the last few words there, right? In Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. In other words, this, this peace is for the believer. Paul is addressing believers. This is only for believers. And it's promised to the believer. And it comes in, a, in, 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 in its fullness in our lives as we fill our hearts, our souls, and our minds with Christ. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. As we worship Christ, meditate on him, and all he is for us, all he has done for us, all we have in him, as our affection for Christ grows, so does our peace in him. Christ is not just our salvation. He is our life. He is our joy. He is our peace. He is our living. Christ, Christ did not come just to save us and get us to heaven. But the gospel is filled with all of these other wonderful promises that even in this life, in Christ, we have a peace that surpasses all understanding. What a wonderful, wonderful, rich passage of Scripture. God is at work as we are working. Let's pray together. I'm going to pray for us tonight and um, we'll be dismissed. Father in heaven, Lord, we, we do love you and praise you and thank you so much for your word. It is so rich, Father. It is so filled with wonderful encouragement and insight into your will and into your promises, Father. The more we study, the more we learn, the more we see how wonderful it is, how gracious you are. The more we understand, Father, that it's not, it's not by us, but it is through us. You are working in us to perfect us and to sanctify us and to make us ready for heaven. Lord, we thank you, God, for that there, there's so many other things. We, we thank you first and foremost for our salvation, but then there, there are so many other things that are attached to that, that are, that are treasures to us, Father. It, it's a treasure to be able to have peace in this world, in this life, the peace of God. So, Father, we ask that you might strengthen us and help us to pursue these things, Father, that enrich our peace that we have from you. Joy, gentleness, faith in prayer. Lord, as we sang earlier, what a friend we have in Jesus. We can take everything to you in prayer. God, help us and move us to, to do that each and every day. And as we are praying tonight, Lord, we pray for Susie's brother and his upcoming surgery. And we just ask, God, that you would do a great work in his physical body. We ask, God, that you would...